What's up guys, it's Maxwell, back with another war recap video. And in a random but arranged war we were facing off against One Hive 2.0. The breakdown for this war was 5 Town Hall 11s each, 12 Town Hall 10s each and then all the rest Town Hall 9s in this 30 vs 30. And we are going to kick things off with Sloffles who actually decided to stay a little bit longer and uh, this time he got the 6 pack as well, so great performance to him. Um, coming in right here with an interesting attack. Um, healers on the golems uh, for the initial part of this one. Wizards doing the funneling, just uh, yeah, the golems are staying very healthy, so um, that's definitely going to help him push very deep into this base. Uh, sort of a creative strategy, we don't see that uh, too often uh, executed this way, uh, but definitely very cool to see, and also it worked uh, out in the end, which is of course then even better if it looks good and works out as well. So, um, double jump for this one. Only one Rage spell and then a Poison spell and two Haste spells is what he decided to go with. Uh, we have a Vaby CC on defense, so uh, nothing too threatening right there. Gotta be able to deal with that. Um, the Bowlers are just so good at dealing with the Valkyries, um, with the King and Golems tanking in front. The Golems, obviously, when they explode, also do quite a bit of damage to the Valkyries. And then for those backhand air defenses, he has a couple of Haste spells, actually, to get those out of the way quicker. Um, so, yeah. There go a couple of backhand loons, uh, he did that uh, baby dragon and then double loon trick on that expo uh, towards the outside, so um, nice attack, very very uh, good looking attack as we are used to from him. Uh, this was a triple, the other one was a triple as well as I already mentioned, and yeah, very good war, a couple of balloons uh, and goblins in the back as well, but the balloon parade this time, well, not quite up to the standard we saw last time, but <laughs> no, just kidding, uh, nice job to Slowfuls and uh, yeah. Getting a triple on number 29, Jepperschall. And then we have number 23 and my man Robin coming in for this one right here. Bringing the Queen Charge Lalo that we usually uh, see or see very often right now. Um, starting things off at the Town Hall, so um, definitely taking a lot of time to get this building down of course since it has so much HP. But he just figured out that he can create the perfect funnel for his Queen right here and create the perfect uh, walk. So um, that's what he's going to do. Uh, Baby Dragon is going to be able to do the entire job, so only 10 troop space for funneling, that's pretty cheap, so it's definitely nice if you are able to do it that way. Um, enemy Queen is going to die, Rage Bell was able to take care of Enemy King and Queen, so that's very cheap as well. Um, there goes the King with the Wizard to funnel him into the right direction, looking good, he's sort of suiciding the King right there, the King is taking a lot of damage, but uh, really only needs to create the other half of the funnel for Queen. Uh, because she's of course going to charge into the base and get um, at least two air defenses out of the way and the clan castle as well. We have three baby dragons in the clan castle for this one, so uh, nothing to worry about with the queen charge. Actually favors the queen charge, of course. And uh, yeah, there goes the third baby dragon. It's going to rage because it's on its own, but uh, the queen still has the rest of that rage spell onto her. And she's going to get another rage spell actually, so um, dealing with that baby dragon with relative ease goes another cannon. Um, it's also nice that he has the Rage Bell to uh, burn through this gold storage because it has so much HP. There goes the second air defense and now he's good to go with his uh, Lalu deployment. So coming in from the bottom right here with two Lava Hounds. And then uh, looks like those balloons actually did not go to the cannon but they went through the mortar. So um, not ideal right there but it's going to work out. They're going to fly onto that Archer Tower nicely. So pathing now looking very good right here as we are used to by him. Um, Always looks pretty good and yeah, the balloon's just absolutely crushing everything. The queen is still alive as well, so whenever your queen stays alive for so long and does not go down in a Laloon raid, it's pretty much always three because it's never a time fail. Um, obviously most bases are um, getting waltzed over right now, but sometimes we still see uh, time fails. That's the most um, common error right now I see um, in Tunnel 9 meta time fails, but if the queen stays alive, she puts out so much damage, it's usually never time fail. So yeah. Beautiful job right here to Robin getting it done on number 23. Alright, and with that we are already on to Town Hall 10 action. So only two Town Hall 9s this war, and that is uh, because our 10s uh, were once again so good this war. The 9s were good as well. We had 7 scouts uh, from Town Hall 9s, and um, that's quite a lot if you uh, take into account that there were only 13 Town Hall 9s in the war. So um, very <laughs> strange, or sort of strange, roster at least to what we are used to, uh, because we are used to lighter rosters. 
with uh, more tunnel times, co tunnel lines compared to the tunnel tens and elevens we saw in this war. But maybe this is also something that we are going to see in the CWL and MCWL in the future. Heavier rosters, um, everybody and their friend have predicted it uh, until now. Um, that uh, due to the changes uh, when Tunnel 9 is so much easier, a lot of people are upgrading to Tunnel 10. We are going to see heavier rosters. Uh, this was maybe it's maybe a little bit of a preview of that with uh, five, uh, uh, 5 Tunnel 11s each, 12 Tunnel 10s, and then only 13 <coughs> Tunnel 9s. Excuse me. In a 30 versus 30, so um, yeah, but we had seven scouts as I said, so very good performance by our nines. And uh, one half uh, 2.0 actually had to dip four times, so I um, have not seen dips uh, in quite a while, um, at least not from our side. But in this one, it was necessary, so a huge decrepancy there with the um, tunnel nine performance, which certainly set us off, off very nicely for the 10 action. And we were able to get a lot of tunnel 10 versus 10 triples again. We had um. Six in this war, if I'm not mistaken, we're gonna check at the end why we have the double spelly, uh, skelly spell, Lalo, uh, it's double skelly spell, a uh, queen kill in this Lalo attack is what I meant to say again. Um, so yeah, Ogre coming in and getting things done on Z bear right here, that's uh, looking very good, very wrecked, I might uh, uh, add. And yeah, this was the lowest tower ten, obviously, um, but uh, still, you gotta kill that one as well. And the queen was actually killed by the balloon, so don't see that too often. But in this case, uh, the uh, double skelly was not quite able to do the work, but the queen was luckily weak enough or distracted enough to not kill all the balloons. And yeah, ended up being a triple. Not the most convincing one, but a 10 versus 10 triple anyways. And up next we have Tamu, our number 12, coming in on their number 14, Chet. And he's gonna bring a Gobo Lalo, that's pretty much his favorite attack right now. Uh, at least uh, what from what I have seen. Um... Yeah, so this base, this was uh, definitely a cleanup attack. This base was hit like this with a slightly off execution a couple of times before. The queen is meant to go into this compartment with the gold storage and die there, getting the inferno. And a couple of times she went uh, down into the other, uh, into the kill squad and stuff, and killed the lava hound. And just a couple of ugly things happening, but this time it did work out. So definitely kudos to the uh, entire town of ten. Uh, squad because this was definitely a teamwork effort right here and Tamo just coming away with the beautiful and clean execution getting it done so um, yeah there goes the ability and the inferno last second getting that out of the way and then the queen is going to die perfect suicide mission right here take a look at how uh, much this kill squad is wrecking the base um, yeah not much left even to pick up for the Lalo but the Lalo is relatively small as well only um, I think oh, it was it 12 balloons uh, two lava hounds, so not the biggest Lalo in the world, but as I said, the kill squad getting massive work done. So, um, yeah, very good looking attack, as I said, planned out for quite a while. So, um, definitely a very good one. The loons, uh, sort of having to path back there, maybe a little bit of a timing issue, but nevertheless, a very good Lalo. And, um, yeah, actually, a couple of lava pups surviving, so we're gonna have lava pup on lava pup action, um, to kill those. And, um, yeah, that's gonna be the triple for Tamo, absolutely. Absolutely wrecking it. He got several triples again this war as well. Tunnel 10, Tunnel 11, you name it. Uh, he's absolutely in a very good form right now, so uh, nice job here. And then we have base number 13, and Matt got 10v10 this war as well, so very good uh, for him. Really happy for him to get a 10v10. Um, has actually been sitting out for a couple of wars, uh, if I'm not mistaken. No, I think I'm mixing him up. Uh, Definitely hit, well, I think he hit 11s or something. Well, definitely didn't get a 10 v 10 in quite a while, so definitely good to see him get one here. Um, I actually forget what I said, I think that was all wrong. But he got the 10 v 10 and he has the coolest funnel, or one of the coolest funnels right here. Check that out. Goblins able to clean uh, those resource buildings to uh, create the other half of the funnel, so that's definitely something new. The hero's out of range and the mortar focus on the golem, so um, yeah, definitely very creative and very, very funny, so... Um, if I had to pick this, this was definitely one of the two best 10v10s we had this war. There's a pretty sick one coming up as well, uh, but you're gonna have to, to wait a little bit for that, but this one was pretty good as well. So, three baby dragons, and uh, the queen is going around the outside, so that was not the plan in this case, of course. The queen was meant to go inside, but there goes a free spell, freezing the inferno and the wizard tower, saving the bowlers from a bit of splash damage, and the baby dragons all died to poison, so a little bit lucky on that, I gotta say it. But the queen is just doing immense work around the outside because the middle is tanking and uh, 
the queen is gonna pick off so many buildings uh, that he can pretty much swag his backhand loon part. And um, yeah, the backhand loons, uh, we were talking about that later, that just did not really work out for him. It was not, uh, maybe not the ideal placement, but uh, yeah, the backhand loons were just not uh, not ideally deployed. But anyways, uh, at this point, it was pretty much all over. So um, uh, yeah, the first part of the attack was so good that uh, it ended up working out. We're gonna speed through the rest because... Uh, it's just the queen walking around the base and picking off uh, all the rest of the buildings. So we were definitely uh, on the edge of our seats in clan chat when this attack happened. But the queen um, had just enough time to bang through the wall and grab the, uh, the dark elixir storage, which luckily had low health. So yeah, nice travel right here by Matt. And up next is number 8 and uh, our number 8, Bene, coming in for this one. And this is uh, probably the sickest 10v10 triple we had this war. Um, take a look at this dragon, guys. This dragon that has been deployed... In the 3 o'clock corner over there, that dragon is going to be the absolute MVP of this attack and this war. Of course, it, it's going to get a lot of work done there, you would think, because so many uh, unprotected storages and resource buildings that, um, yeah, it will be able to do work, but there's actually a tester that's going to pop, so just keep an eye on the dragon while the queen is doing work on her suicide mission up top. Um, yeah, so there goes the tester, it's damaging the dragon now, so he uh, reacts to that with one balloon, dropping it in. Uh, to hopefully get the Tesla down, but actually the balloon gets targeted, so he gets a bomb off on the Tesla, and the ex Tesla actually does not die, so Tesla still roasting the dragon, and the dragon is uh, doing its thing, taking its time, as dragons do, then it's gonna burn on Tesla, but it's gonna take shots from the wizard tower. Now take a look, there goes uh, the golem and the um, wall breakers, and the wizard tower, the dragon flies out of range of the wizard tower, and it's going to continue doing work. So the most amazing dragon ever in Clash of Clans right here. Um, just a very smart, very smart, uh, and uh, almost an arrogant dragon, uh, with such little, little HP, surviving that much longer, and getting so much work done. All those buildings are now exposed to it, and uh, it's going to get it done, uh, those down. And he's actually going to place balloons and kill the wizard tower and save the dragon from dying, so the dragon can freely work on clean up some more and um, yeah just amazing stuff right here the dragon I think already made the entire attack worth watching three spells left for the back and side that's of course gonna be plenty to kill uh, this base and yeah there goes freeze and the rage and the haste spell is left in the back so um, yeah very nice job to be in it as we are used to and uh, dragon has gotten the town hall at this point just don't want to fail to mention the dragon in this attack um, yeah so very very nicely done um, and uh, another triple. This was the fifth one that we had actually. I uh, One of those triples I cannot show uh, because one I uh, 2.0 would like me not to and I'm of course going to respect that. So let's move on to the sixth 10v10 triple then. And that is going to come from Fabi once again. So um, yeah, pretty much getting in 10v10 every war. Uh, there goes the bowler. This was also a cleanup so this base was attacked like this before. But uh, he was able to pull it off uh, pretty much like Tama with the very clean execution. Um, yeah, so the bowler not getting that AD down, but he got, he's got a uh, level 4 earthquake spell in the back, so um, gonna drop that onto that air defense to get it out of the way. Meanwhile, the queen is uh, doing her thing. The wall breakers are gonna have to be perfect right here. There goes the rage plan, those enraged wall breakers, and they actually almost opened up the next wall, but. Uh, in this case, um, it did work out to not open the next wall, which is crucial for the queen charge. King is going to come in at 12 o'clock in a moment, and it is going to um, allow some tanking for some more bowlers, and clean the other side just so that the queen can then go into the core and uh, destroy some more buildings over there. So there goes the golem, uh, the bowler, a uh, couple more bowlers actually. Actually, the bowler uh, at uh, 1.30 is going to get roasted by the um, archer tower. That was not the plan, it was placed a little bit early. But he's going to compensate for that. There go the wall breakers. The wizard is going to help out with that barracks right there. Meanwhile, queen is killing the uh, enemy queen at the clan castle all with one rage spell and uh, a couple of poison spells. Actually, no, only one poison spell, excuse me. Um, the witches are going to step into it, which is always relieving when the witches jump into the poison because otherwise they can be pesky, um, and especially in a queen walk. Um, two witches uh, in a queen walk. Um, I think a queen, not even a level 45 queen can get those down because they spawn so many skeletons. But um, yeah, so the in this case it worked out, as I said. King is going to move in and grab several more buildings, um, but then lock onto the enemy king and of course uh, got not going to do anything for this air attack from that point on. But queen is jumping in behind, so 
that's looking good. Haste plan to the first inferno gets that out of the way very quickly, and then um, yeah, moving on uh, towards the base, um, taking out that sweeper air defense. Queen still alive, gonna grab that last air defense. So at this point, a bunch of troops left in the haste spell, and it's triple. And the queen is even gonna grab the last inferno. So really nice job right here. A very very good attack. And um, the plan was OP. The execution was difficult, but he was able to pull it off and got an overkill on his base. So yeah, very nice job. Very cool attack to watch. And uh, we're gonna move on to one more hit. And then it's going to be uh, 10 versus 11 on number 5 by Nati. That was the thickest one we had this war. And once again, shout out to our town of 10s because this war we were perfect for 10 versus 11. So we were 5 out of 5. Took only 5 hits to, tri to 2 star. Not to triple. But to 2 star all their town on 11. So the best town on 10 versus 11 performance we ever had inside DLZ. And that's why I definitely wanted to include... And uh, one of those attacks just to um, yeah provide the the coverage and the shout out to all of the the job that the Town Hall tents did against the 11th this war. So um, yeah, Nati coming in right here with a queen walk and then a golem bowler kill squad obviously to get the Town Hall. Um, yeah, so starting things off, the walk is a little bit slow, so we are gonna two x a little bit through that. Um, you guys have all seen a queen walk before that is gonna get several trash buildings and create. One half of the funnel, so um, yeah, now the, the golem is in, it's doing some tanking um, very early right here. The wizard is creating the funnel, there goes the wall breaker. Um, nice, uh, nice amount of time to place those wall breakers because everything is being tanked for and now the golem is moving in. Gonna wait until the golem goes just in front, then gonna come in with the king and all the bowlers. So there is a nice space between the golem and the bowlers here so that um, they can be tanked for, yeah, so... Definitely very cool on the execution. The Molta Inferno is gonna get frozen once the bowlers step into range. And then the jump spell has been placed accurately. Everything is gonna be jumping in right onto the town hall, get that out of the way. And yeah, just absolutely demolish the middle of the space. Um yeah, very very good, very, very nicely done at the two star already in the back. And you will notice 37 seconds left, so getting a bunch more work done. Actually, not too too much percentage, but the minions and archers are of course always taking a bit of time to get buildings down though the eagle is still alive so uh, yeah time is limited and there we go 59% for Nati and uh, yeah that's gonna be that and with that we are gonna check the results guys 85 to 77 so very very commanding victory GG to 1 half 2.0 thank you guys for uh, doing the matchup with us definitely had a ton of fun and I know you guys were a little bit uh, unfortunate on your and performance this war but it was midweek so it's can always be tough and um yeah um just a little bit of a struggle but obviously we were able to two star all the um 11s and then we clear tens so no 10 left standing we actually could have done a little bit better we could have gotten ourselves a few 11 versus 11 attempts we had none um but uh, the time management was just a bit tough so we had the last wars our time management was always really on point and this war we had 19 attacks left with 2 hours left in war, so it was definitely a struggle. And then we went only 6 out of 10 for dips, so that wasn't good. Um, uh, I was, of course, once again included in that as well, so I um, only got 1 of 2 uh, possible triples. Um, yeah, so they struggled on our 10s. Uh, Steve with a new base, doing really well. And um, uh, the uh, meta account right here as well, so 10s um, left standing. I don't actually want to show the entire map, so... Um, once again, guys, uh, two more excuses. Sh sorry for uh, my voice. I probably sound like shit this video because I've got a cold. So I definitely wanted to or had to record it anyways before the replays were wiped. And sorry for this video coming out so late. The week, uh, the war was in the middle of last week just before the MCWL matchup. But we had an agreement with OneHive 2.0 that it would come out after their uh, CWL match. So that's why it's coming out right now so late. And um, yeah. Just gotta be respectful with the other clans and accept their terms and conditions, which I am of course doing. That's why I also did not show our 6 10v10, only showed 5 out of 6, but you guys are gonna be able to live with that. So, great performance to the team. Really, really good. I'm really happy with the performance. Um, and I know the other guys are probably as well. Always looking to improve, of course, but um, cannot complain with clearing tents in such a heavy war. And yeah, absolutely crushed it. So, uh, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. And until the next one, I will see you all later. Peace out.